Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Most of us have met more than our fair share of people we just cannot stand. These are people who do not like us either, who fall into the category that Jesus in today's gospel calls enemies. There are two kinds of enemies. First, the obvious ones, the so-called heavy or hard hitters. They slander us, cheat us, vandalize our property, do violence to us. Perhaps we are lucky and have yet to meet an enemy of this sort but they assault our fellow human beings every day. Read the daily papers or watch the daily news with their record of armed robberies, sexual assault, unprovoked attacks, bombings, and the like. Vicious, ruthless enemies are not fantasies. They exist. Next come the less obvious nemesis. Simply someone who behaves in an unfriendly and rude manner. And of these, we have all met plenty. They do not make the same headlines as mass murderers, terrorists, or bank robbers. But paradoxically, they are often harder to treat in a Christian way. Think of the neighbor who plays his karaoke so loud until the small hours of the morning. The boss who greets you with a frown rather than a smile. A colleague 
who gives the cold shoulder each time praises are heaped on you. How should we handle enemies, both obnoxious and petty? The instinctive human response is to hit back. After all, revenge is sweet. But Jesus counters Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who maltreat you. Be kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful. Stop judging and condemning. Forgive. Let me share a beautiful wisdom from the Buddha. The Buddha said, My son, a man who slanders a virtuous person is like a man who spits at the sky. The spittle doesn't soil the sky. It only comes back to soil the face of the man who spit. A man who slanders a virtuous person is like a man who flings dust into the wind. The dust doesn't reach its target. It only blows back into the face of the man who threw it. These bluntly spoken words from our Lord and the Buddha are difficult to hear. They may challenge us at the deepest part of our being. Most likely, each one of us has been wounded, tyrannized, betrayed, or abandoned at differing times in our lives. If that person was the best friend, the wounding is typically amplified since we trusted and loved that individual. However, who among us has not wounded or betrayed another? It is all part of our human condition. What does Jesus mean by love? In his own life, Jesus had to work hard at honoring his own ethic. It was a bloody and painful affair. He offered love even though he knew that the return would never measure up to what was offered. He never bargained love for love. And he made it a habit of confusing his enemies by loving them even more. Jesus expects the same from us. Love is offered because someone, somewhere, is stumbling through a loveless and lonely life. Love, or rather mercy, is given because someone, somewhere, is shut off in his wrongdoing and guilt. These are gifts which create worth in another person. It is like building a castle in wasteland or giving a person a map to the unforgotten, rather to the forgotten geography of paradise. Or simply putting a stop to the epidemic of meanness. Love creates its own reality, its own force for goodness. This love does not come in moments of high drama. 
what Jesus demands is the quiet, unpublicized, everyday heroism of turning the other cheek and walking the extra mile. Hardly a day goes by without a chance to practice it. This is the love that enables us to refuse the offer of putting a spear through the heart of our sleeping victims. The paradox is, by doing good to others, it will bounce back to us in surprising ways. God's grace will be heaped upon us in good measure. Jesus understands that forgiving is first a decision. However, it is also a process. The path to forgiveness may take a long time, and understandably so. However, whether now or later, we need to choose and decide to forgive. To love your enemies is badge of courage, a Christian tattoo, the devil's taboo. So, why love your enemies? Why love our enemies? The gospel gives two simple